Hey there folks, this is David on David's Brain. Welcome back to our uh, post-game playthrough of Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, go to my Patreon links in the description at the bottom. And yeah, off screen, just to save yourself all uh, just to save you all that pain and anguish. I dived into I dived into the far away forest and I finally got all the ingredients. So yeah, let's go and get ourselves our awesome costumes. Oh yeah, and I finally finished all the research and got all my, and got my kingdom's maximum influence all the way up to uh, what was that word again? What was that number again? Uh, let me let's just take. I brought what you asked for. Don't ask me how I got it though, it's a nightmare I never want to experience, but I'm most likely going to have to over and over and over again. Although, it does look pretty. Oh! By the gods! An opal human! So they truly do exist! These colors are not like anything I've ever seen before. Thank you, Your Majesty, and from the bottom of my heart, I shall now be able to produce paintings unlike anything that has ever been seen before. Mm. That sounds incredible! I can't wait to see them! <laughs> I hope they will delight both you and your subjects alike. Bringing joy to people is my life's work, after all. Mm -hmm. And you're very good at it. Then keep it up, Pippany! Woo! And next up, Andrew. Beep boop! I need you to bring me two Subsanium Nuggets. Thank you, Evan! Beep beep! Material analysis complete! Looks like you got me the two nuggets of Sasantium I asked for! Boop boop beep! This is great! Bracken's going to love this outfit! Beep beep boop boop! Finally, I have all the materials I need! I'll head to the outfitters and finish up! Wait in the castle and I'll come by when I'm done! Alright, so... Worth it! Hey! Hey, Evan! What do you think of my new look? It looks awesome! I, I definitely like the monocle. <gasps> you look swish as anything, Bracken Mutton! Mm. It really suits you, Bracken! <laughs> Thanks, guys! And thank you most of all, Andrew! <laughs> boop, boop, beep, beep! My pleasure! And it doesn't just look good, it's got a cool new feature, too! Mm? What kind of feature? <laughs> boop, beep, beep, beep! It's a special upgrade notification feature. What the? Oh, what does it do? Beep, boop, boop, beep. It notifies you whenever it's time for me to get an upgrade. Isn't that neat? Ah, oh. oh, great. I don't know if that's a feature I would have chosen myself. But hey, I don't mind. I'm a big fan of upgrading stuff. Robots, kingdoms, you name it. <laughs> What's the spirit, Bracken? I can't wait to see what you come up with next. <laughs> All right, let's go and decorate out officially. Here we are, the ingenious outfit. I don't know why, but for some reason I always think of, uh, yeah, someone I mean, I in charge of like technology or whatever should probably have like a monocle or something like that. It just looks cool. pretty much created a paradise. And now I'm just waiting until the DLC comes along with like expanded story content to see something go uh, go screw up. I need your help. Let's see, reels of moonrise thread. Here you are. Here we are, two reels of moonrise
Okay. Okay, kind of looks more like a conductor, but still snazzy. Well, Evan, what do you think of the outfit Grim made for me? I think it's pretty stylish myself. Mm, you look wonderful, Roland. <laughs> Cookie, there's Jazzy. You're a proper statesman now, ain't it? <laughs> Good to hear. Wouldn't want to disappoint. Thanks, Grim. You too, Evan. It was my pleasure, Roland. It's least you deserve for all you've done for everyone. Think of it as a gift from the people of Evermore. Uh -huh. Gift from the people, huh? I better not try to let them down. Mm. I'm sure you will, Roman. We're all counting on you. I mean, what could honestly top a uh, 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 rose fit for the king of Hydropolis? Not bad. Yo. Hey there. Thanks for everything. And thanks for waiting. Now I'm very proud to present in his new finery, Leander, Junior Counsel to the King. Well. Honestly, there was no need to create a uniform for me specifically. Oi! Blimey, that's a great for the all. Try to show more enthusiasm, Leander, man. Excuse me? I can make this outfit for you because he's a big fan of yours, Neander. And he's not the only one. Yeah. You bet I'm not. You're like the coolest guy in this whole kingdom. Everyone's real glad to have you around. Really? The truth is I who should be grateful to them. Forgive me. You see, my departure from Hytropolis was not made easily. I had thought that I might much prefer to remain by Queen Nera's side. But I'm glad that I came here. I've learned much, and most of all. I, um, uh, most of all, I've learned how important a role Hydropolis has to play on the world stage. But also, I have learned of my kingdom's limitations, of how other nations far surpass us in magic, engineering, and the other arts. And with these insights come a newfound respect of and admiration for all the peoples of the world, and a desire to help them. To save them. Gosh, I never knew. Queen Nero knew that coming here would bring about this change in me, I'm sure. This is why she sent me here. By all means. Your Majesty, Kent, thank you. I shall continue to serve humbly as your Minister of Spellcraft, and to fulfill my duties to the best of my abilities. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear, Leander. Thanks. Alright, next up a little gift for the Swole Lord. Yeah. Yeah, two champions buttons. These two were the absolute worst ones to get. I had to climb to all the way to the top. Uh-oh, I'm dodging uh, incredibly high-level monsters just to get these two stupid buttons and better be worth it. Thanks. All right, you got me all the stuff I need. Thanks, man. We're gonna go finish up the outfit right now. I'll get back to you to come and try it on when it's done and bring him to see you. We're in the castle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait! He's gonna look super cool, I promise. Well, he better be super cool after all I went through. Well, he's green. Huh? Definitely gets a few bonus points with me. Green's my favorite color. Uh, what does this scurvy cur think he's playing at? Drag me into a dresser room and insist I put on this fancy foinery. Flip it, Ackman! You're actually presentable for once! Yeah, gotta agree. That, yeah, you actually look like you can actually, you know, someone that actually actually hold a political conversation. <laughs> uh, I've not worn sneezes, I was knee high to a higgledy. Uh, yeah. Knee high to a higgledy. 
I, I'm sorry, Foxy. I just I thought I'd make you something for special occasions, you know? I guess I messed up, though. You don't like it, huh? Much obliged. Well, I suppose I could get used to that. This leave or two ain't precisely the end of the world. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad you don't hate it. Mm, it really suits you, Batu. <laughs> all right, all right, the lot of ya. I suppose I could pop it over from time to time. Much obliged, Jared. And now for the last one. Well, I gotta say, this outfit is definitely gonna be laying on a little thick, uh, if you've seen the ending. <laughs> Ta-da! Claire, what do you think? Crikey! Very beautiful you are! Golly! It really suits you, Tanny. <laughs> you should have seen all the attention she attracted on the way here. Surely she's taken the first steps on the road to fashion superstardom. Oh, stop it, Hallie Maid. <laughs> I really do like it, though. I suppose I feel, well, like a princess. <laughs> or maybe even a queen, eh? I mean, you got a spare throne going, eh? I mean, we got a spare throne going, ain't it? <gasps> Shut up, Lofty. That's not what I meant at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what did you mean? Oh, Evan, Evan, my poor little cat here. Oh, chump. You'll figure it out soon enough. Let's just forget our say anything, shall we? Ta! Thanks again for making this beautiful dress for me, Helen I suppose I should thank you too for getting this stuff together, Evan. And with that, I think that's all the side quests.
Oh, why does that mask look so familiar? Huh. Let's see. Bink the blink. <laughs> Surf's up, dudes. Catches the major raids. Upgub the enlightened. <laughs> oh, enlightened. Cute. Real cute. Let's see here. Twiggy the twisty. Skip the squiff. Okay, did Dr. Seuss just come up with some of these names? Let's see, Turin the Torrental. Ghost Guy the Grenade. A little dog collar. That means he's tough. Boojum the Bombastic. Oh wait, it's one of those stupid unicorn zombies from Metal Gear Survive. Ugh, now I regret making them. Scroobius the Rash and... Oh man, what is up with these Higgledies having stuff impaled in their heads? Rise thread and oh no, King's Brocade. Oh boy. Oh, to get all the Higgledies, I'm gonna need to. <laughs> oh no. What's well, the Ice Flow Shell? Oh, oh boy. It's the Sanctum Nuggets. Alright, let's just go and check him on Tyrion, see if he is finally uh, ready to level
Coronac the Cranky. Oh, this one really likes to dress up. Give it the Jaldens. And Charnel the Let's go and check up on all the new little hickledies. Let's see. Fidget the Festive. A certain jolly old chap who delighted in bringing presents to children dropped one, from the, uh, dropped one in the snow. And from it, it was born this friendly hickledy. For Fidget, every day is a holiday as he rides about in his sleigh giving festive greetings to all and sundry. So, Santa exists in this world? Hurley has a deep affinity with all things twisty and has been known to spend hours gazing fondly at swirly apples. Pib the Progenitor, a footloose and fancy free higgledy born from a young man's desire to visit unknown worlds. Pib travels the world ceaselessly from arid desert to icy tundra and back again. But if he was honest, he'd admit he's been feeling like settling down for a while. Uh, Rabjuus the Fossilier, a higgledy born from the sort of a famed military tactician. Fraptus uh, himself is no great strategist, but he's a fearsome warrior who never admits defeat. His sheer pluck makes him a great ally on the battlefield. And Mimsy, Mimsy the Magnificent. An adorable Higgly who is readily identified by her big red ribbon. She was born from a young girl's desire to become a fashion icon, and while she may look lovable, don't be fooled. When Mimsy hits you, you stay hit. Crobobulus the Cryptic. A Higgly born from a young boy's yearning to write award-winning detective novels. He may look the part, but Crumbobulus' sleuthing skills are severely limited. He's what you might call a defective detective. So, he's Inspector Clouseau, then. And Boodles the Beastly. Born from the, heart of, uh, born from the heart of a fierce beast who commanded a vast army of hedgehounds and quiverines, this uncouth chap doesn't think of himself as a higgledy at all. He claims to be a wild animal, and while he may not have fangs or claws, he wields a mean spear. Because, you know, okay, close enough, I guess. Ablongus the Alarming. The Higgledy who wears a cursed mask that's said to bring disaster. He was born from the spirit of an ancient sorcerer who dabbled in the darkest of magics, but he's actually quite a friendly chap. Uh, sadly, he has a, bit, a bad habit of cursing people when trying to be friendly. Mm, Claptrap the Kingly. A legendary Higgledy whose origins remain a mystery. Experts in Spritecraft have claimed that he might be the spirit of a mighty warrior who never once lost a battle. What's certain is that he appears in times of strife, hell-bent on bringing peace back to the world. Well, dude, we certainly could have used you, like, uh, forever ago. But, okay. Twiggy the Twisty. Uh, Twiggy was born from the wonder of the first breath taken by all living things. 
The branch on his head is still growing, and that will eventually produce beautiful leaves that will stand as a true testament to nature's bounty. Aradav the Aviator. An elusive Higgledy who is liable to vanish as suddenly as he appears. When he's not part of a Higgledy battalion, he'll be off visiting some far-flung corner of the world. This may be thanks to an unquenchable spirit of adventure or a terrible sense of direction. Uh, mostly going for door number two. Flatwaggle the Feathery. Flatwaggle was born from a bird's wings and is always happy just to ride the wind and see where he ends up. He may be a free spirit, but when battle begins, he obeys his orders to the letter and is more than happy to roll up his sleeves and get involved. Swirlium the Conqueror. Uh, Conqueror. A Higgledy born from the love people have for the natural world. Swirlium has a gentle soul, but the spiky chestnut on his head keeps other Higgledies at bay. Not everyone avoids him, though. Farmers often pray to him to improve their harvests. Gear the Flyer. A Higgledy born from the sheer power of a gale force wind. As his name suggests, he's very speedy indeed, and can always beat a hasty retreat when a battle isn't going his way. He likes to join Sky Pirates and their skimmers for the occasional spin. And Giddy the Gusty. The leaf on his head changes color with the seasons. Someone when asked him if he was Phil agreed to fight his twin, uh, and it annoyed him so much that he ate his leaf, and loudly declared that he didn't know whether. Okay. Sir Pimple the Whimper. Uh, a Higgledy born from a legendary knight's shield. He took after his chivalrous originator and has declared himself wholeheartedly to the, the pursuit of honor and the pursuit of glory, and to the defense of honor and the pursuit of purity. He will not bow to others and always pursues his own path. So, a little goody two shoes. Let's see. Oofish the Offish. Important from an ancient shaman's mask which witnessed terrible tragedy and great joy. It's believed that it was Oofish himself who originally taught him was the spirit medium spell. Though the truth of this, like everything else about him, is hard to know for sure. Mmm, can't get a good face there. Flippity to Fluttery. A Higgledy born for the love of all Sky Pirates half of the wind. It's be he's believed to have modeled his look after that of a certain Sky Pirate chieftain. He's never without his trusty bandana and travels wherever the wind takes him, always ready for adventure. <laughs> hey! Look at that, I got myself a little admirer. Let's see. Go Sky at the Grenade. If ever a candle goes out for suddenly, uh, if ever a candle goes out suddenly for no good reason, you can guarantee that this chap had a hand in it. If you're pure-hearted enough to be able to see Higgledy's, maybe you'll spot Ghost Guy fle fleeing the scene in his trademark studded collar. Bojun the Bombastic. He sprang out of a, of a volcano fully formed in a dramatic burst of lava. When Bojun gets worked up, he makes lava, which can cause the volcano spike in his head to melt a little bit. Well, while he may be hot-headed, he's very protective of younger Higgledy's in battle. Scroobius the Rash. A Higgledy born for the flames under a pot of delicious stew, Scroobius is obsessed with things being cooked at just the right temperature, and can often be found in the kitchen glaring at the oven. The screw in his head gets looser the more annoyed he gets. Mmm. Uh, love of perfect temperatures? Don't we all? Let's see here. Noel the Coal Fire. A highly responsible Higgledy, Noel likes to make sure that fires don't get out of control. He expects homes to make sure matches are hidden away from children and that there's a bucket of water handy in case anything catches light. Which is kind of ironic when, yeah, considering, yeah, he's a fire higgledy. Mm. Or a grove of the burning. In ancient times, there was a tribe that worshipped fire higgledies almost exclusively. Or a grove was especially revered as a bringer of knowledge. What he taught that tribe can be discovered among the dusty tomes of the library in Goldpaw. Garib the Glowering. If you ever feel resentment, envy, or anger burning in your heart, it may be the work of Grave. He has a way of stoking people's least attractive emotions until they become a blazing inferno. Oh. Banner Snatch the Blazer. Banner Snatch embodies the passion and high spirits of youth. When people are filled with emotion, be it love or pride or ambition, then he grows more powerful. But when they're downhearted and dismayed, he gets weaker. So these two are basically mood, mood rings or something like that? Snicker Snack the Searing. Born from the sword of a chivalrous knight, Snicker Snack burns with a passion for justice. In truth, he takes himself a bit a little too seriously and can be a bit of a pain to be around. Though he and Sir Pimple the Whimper are firm friends. Bantam the Rotitious. It's believed that Bantam was brought into being when a naughty school child dabbling in magic accidentally unleashed a fireball at their teacher. Okay. He likes to cause as much trouble as he can, and is constantly playing tricks on his more straight laced companions. Okay, so. Yeah, this Higgledy was born from an accidental fire starter. Good to know. Tinder the Torch. A Higgledy born for the ferocious temper of a grumpy old man. 
Tender has a short fuse too, and I can tell you how angry it is at any given moment by how high the flames on his head are flickering. But he isn't irritated by now has a fierce fire burning constantly in his heavy-duty headgear. It's safe to say he can withstand high temperatures and he has no problem staying out in the sun. Yeah, it kind of looks like what would happen to, uh, if a big daddy from the first Bioshock fused with a uh, with a fireman from Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, I'm just... Oof. Let's see, Brock in the Brainy. The higgledy born from a swirling seagrass was imbued with the power of life. He could still be seen dancing wildly by the shore with his helpers, and apparently you could tell what kind of mood they're in based on their moods. On the moves. Shilly Shally the Shy. Shilly Shally was born from a pool of purest water, and as such is obsessed with cleanliness. He washes the leaf on his head every morning and replaces it with a new one every week. He gets sad if, ever, uh, if other Higgledies don't like the leaves he picks. Skiff the Squiff. A uh, Higgledy is always uh, always goes with the flow. Uh, uh, oh my! Is, that's a plunger! A Higgledy with a plunger on it! <laughs> oh! The only thing that gets us go is when people insist on asking Kind of a fair maiden. He is unfailingly loyal and will gladly follow his master into any battle. Shrimpers the Shanty Boy, an old crewmate of Miz and the Mariners who dreams of one day becoming captain of his own ship. He pays regular visits to Captain the Punhole, where he gazes longingly at the boats being built. His jaunty sailor's cap often blows away in strong winds. And he's got himself a really weird stand involving bubbles. <laughs> Miz and the Mariner, a buccaneering higgledy who sails the high seas in search of adventure. Anyone who catches sight of Mizzen is seized by a powerful urge to board the nearest boat and sail away. And as long as he stays with the ship, the sea is guaranteed to stay calm. Bink the Blinky. This adorable Higgledy was born from the blossoms that open with the morning sun. She's been around since ancient times, and there are even accounts of her life-giving gifts in ancient Naskin tomes. Shub Shub the Shamanic. Long ago, a shaman who was afraid of the dark made a special mask to keep away any evil spirits that might be abroad at night. Shub Shub was born from that mask and his worship for the purity of his light, though he rather people didn't make a fuss. Dude, chill out, He's a, I'm a glorified nightlight, just take it easy. Clangle the Spangly. Her friends are constantly accusing her of stealing cover on the Clement's look, and this bothers her greatly. Now she's repeatedly pointed out, his sunglasses are black, whereas hers are tinted brown with white glare. They're not the same at all! Gah! Up Gub the Enlightened. <laughs> The Sigurdi was born from the spirit of a flickering streetlight. Now she travels the world, rekindling the lamps that have gone out. But it's not just light she's concerned with. If anyone's feeling deflated or downhearted, well, she'll do all she can to brighten up their lives. Let's see. Kalu the Carboneer. Uh, and Kalu the Carboneer. A master tactician and stalwart soldier, Kalu was a formidable ally in battle, but he does have a famously short temper. But after every angry outburst, he soon regains his cool, so he's fine once you learn how to handle him. Cumberbund the Clement. When people are free from a great weight of worry, a blast of pure energy is released. This is what created Cumberbund, a super cool customer who shines so brightly that he has to wear shades. So... Huh. Oh, the, what's up with the dog collar? Hmm. Quit the Sunlit. A higgledy born from the shield wielded by a famed knight of the olden days. He took after that knight and devoted his life to doing all he could to help others. Thanks to this, he's always able to bring out the best in his comrades when battle is joined. Handsome the Winsome. An enigmatic Higgledy born from the heart of a priest who once served the kingmaker of the lost kingdom of Allegoria. The tale of Handsome's epic journey to the west with a Grimshilla, a Wyvern, and Hedgehound until it was known by all Higgledy children. 
<laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's always a Journey to the West uh, reference. Okay, dude. Let's see. Uh, I forget the name of the guy in Journey to the West. Uh, uh, well, I know. Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll look up Journey to the West. You'll figure it out. Read a book. Roth the Wrongen. A single beam of moonlight fell on a dreamy young man's bed. Its beauty touched his heart, and born, uh, born from this powerful emotion, Roth was born. His pretty moon brooch is a lucky charm that beckons the blessings of the night. Therani the Poot. Therani was born for the weariness of his uh, staff at Ziv's factory in Brawley after yet another 100 hour week. He actually recommends counting Higgledies as a good way to get sleep. Uh, why not try it the next time you have double do uh, trouble dozing off at night? So he's literally the physical embodiment of crunch time. Loki was born from the heart of a naughty little girl who refused to go to bed when she was told. She's energized when humans stay, uh, when children stay up late reading, but quite, uh, quietly fades from view when their parents catch them at it. Yes, how dare you actually, uh, actually uh, start reading? Go to sleep. Tum Tum the Terrible. Her matching white ribbon matches her style. Uh, her, her charming white ribbon means her style matches out of Mimsy the Magnificent and Jub Jub the Jolly, but the three of them aren't related and have never deliberately tried to coordinate for styles. Plus, pretending she's helpless in order to get what she wants. Oh God, you're one of those. Mansum the Irksome. At the 14,546th uh, Higgledy Dinge Olympiad, Maxon took every gold medal going. At least he claims he did. No other Higgledy has ever heard of the tournament, and Maxon is refusing to comment. Oh god, you're just one. Oh, you're a little attention hound. Let's see here. Discomfit the Misfit. Born from the heart of a mighty knight, Discomfit continues to uphold noble chivalric values and believes in fairness and righteousness. He's taciturn and stirred at all times. Unless you put a pile of pancakes in front of him, all bets are off then. Pancakes! Truki the Spooky. He's believed to have once been an evil dragon of the underworld who took on this form so he could come and live on the surface. He's actually far less nasty than he looks. Give him a generous slice of big cheesecake and he'll be putty in your hands. I mean, come on, who doesn't like cheesecake? I mean, unless you're allergic, then in that case, sorry. Um, Coronac the Cranky. This very nasty piece of work who stuns post with his magnificent horns before skewering them. Don't be fooled by his angelic wings either. He uses them to lure victims into a false sense of security before slaying them. Oh great, this guy's a this guy's a dirty little fighter. And Giblet the Jo uh, Giblet the Jowdens. Giblet represents the darkness balancing the light Venice and the uh, the bright brings to the world. He was once summoned to a magical realm which was uh, now vanished from the world, and fell in love with a local delicacy, a curry so spicy it made grown men weep. Ooh. Oh man, spicy curry jeez. Let's see. Charnel the Churish. Uh, a playful Higgledy poor from the unease that dwells in all our hearts. He's actually very kind and caring, and appears to when people are suffering greatly, eager to give them what relief he can. So he always makes them sad to see them running away screaming. Well, I mean, when you wear a mask like that, how can they not think you're evil? I'm sorry to be judgy, but still.
Alright, so, yeah, even though the main story's over with, I've still got a little bit of work to do here. Let's see. Oh, not there. Ah, here we are. All the tainted monsters, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, all the new tainted monsters that are running around. And also, <sighs> conquering the last of the tri- on uh, the last of the Dreamer's Doors. Alright, well, and, uh, well, in exchange for me, well, let's see, uh, yeah, in exchange for you all having to see me, uh, just running around making Higgledies all day, and getting all these cool costumes, all right, let's take a look at the lowest one of the bunch, at the Eventai Trail. Let's see here. Let's see, Eventai Trail, where are you? Ah, there you are. Alright, let's give this guy a test run here and see how badly I get my face kicked in. <laughs> yeah, sounds fun. Hey, now that we got all these cool outfits, let's go and get them all scuffed up by fighting off against uh, the Ten Faces of Evil. <laughs> Oh, there's our boy. Let's see. Limina. Let's see here. Let's see, uh, super safe bastion boots. Well, then again, that was just the weakest one of these ones, so it's only gonna get worse from here. Oh, over to the briny shrine. Oh, looks like a little mini boss rush. Although, if I really wanted to... Oh, wait, what? What was that? What was that I passed there? 
Oh, for a second I almost thought I missed a chest. Like you primarily use darkness attacks, so let's see here. Oh, never mind. There we go. Should do the trick. Party time! Uh-oh.
victory! Yay! Phew, saved the shrine. And I think that'll call it for a day. So, till next time, this is David on David's Brain. See you when I see ya!